Hi, my name is Bob Grunier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so with this is the Radia Scan 701 and it's been trusty and it's uh, very reliable. It has a large pancake detector here and it's for detecting alpha, beta, gamma with its uh, little window here for uh, beta and gamma and so forth. And uh, we've used this before. The, the problem with these kind of devices is that they don't give us any spectral information for the energy of the photons that are coming out. Uh, so, or, or, or the beta. So what you need for that is a spectrometer and normally these things are extremely expensive. However, the manufacturer that makes this uh, radio scan also makes a radio code. And thanks to Bido, we've been able to purchase a number of these and uh, one has arrived with Alan Goldwater in California. Another one has arrived with Hink. Uh, we're still waiting on the one to arrive in Canada. However, um, I have received this one and uh, it took a bit of time to get through customs. Anyway, it's here now. So we're going to have a look at it. And then what we're going to do, um, uh, probably in another video, is uh, we're going to uh, test it with a ultra experiment. Uh, so it's uh, extremely well wrapped here. Now, I don't know whether it was unwrapped and rewrapped by customs. Oh dear, this is a lot of tape. I should have really got an a knife to get myself into this, so I shall do that. So I haven't got a knife, but I have a, a pair of nail clippers, uh, which should do the job nicely. Uh, hopefully, so we cut through this. Yes, they've done a good job with the packing here. Uh, should be able to use that bubble wrap at some point in the future. Okay, so I guess it's somewhere in here. There we go. Uh, so. Oh dear. Oh. Now you can order this directly off their site or they sometimes sell it on uh, Amazon or, oh there we go, that's the package, uh, or uh, eBay, but I think it's best to get it off their site. So it is the Radio Code and we've got some portable dosimeter Radio Code 101. And uh, this is uh, what it should look like. So it's a really nice produced box. It's got Bluetooth, because this apparently connects to your phone or other smart device. And it has software that is on uh, the Google Play Store, so it work, works with Android. And so you actually can control and do recordings. And apparently it has software in there that uh, has a database of known isotopes, so you can actually uh, do some uh, auto detection. So these things are normally quite expensive. So here's the address of the manufacturer there. So we'll open this up. Okay. So it has a passport warranty, whatever that is. Uh, is that inside? I think it's stuck in here. Warranty obligation. So I've got a quick read there. All folks, there we go. So that is the radio code. And it has a nice little manual here, and that is all very well printed. Uh, so th this is uh, made and designed in Russia. And I actually find that uh, in the case of the radio scan, these are very regularly updated. So uh, I've got a good feeling for this. So uh, it says here, Instant reaction to changes in radiation environment thanks to embedded detector based on cesium iodide thallium doped scintillator and solid state silicon uh, photomultiplier in conjunction with an adaptive software processing of incoming data. Uh, it says binding of measurement results to coordinates. Oh, this is cool. So um, it'll link to Google Maps. So when you've got it on the smartphone, it'll know where it is and then it'll record the uh, data. So um, from my point of view, to get this through customs, I said that I collect mushrooms, which I do, and uh, everyone knows that mushrooms have radioactive material in the Czech Republic. And uh, what I will also use it for, uh, and let's have a look at the device first. Oh, it's, it's fairly weighty. I think it's got a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Uh, it's USB-C, it would appear here. Maybe if I can get it to focus there, usb See, so it's a really modern uh, looking device. Uh, oh, it's got a binky binky bonk when you turn it on. 
It's got clicks, uh, one of the different settings here. So uh, you can change it between counts per second, uh, micro sieverts per hour, uh, counts per second. So that's the different things that you can do there. Now if I'm dialing down, I don't know what that's doing. I don't know where that switches between mode. Oh, you've got lock mode, so it's turning on lock mode or off. Don't know what that's like over there. So maybe you press buttons together to do something different. Oh, there you go. So you've got a summation there, and we've got a graph spectrum. So oh, that, look at that. So that is really rather nice. You actually get a spectrum right there on the LCD. I'm, I, I'm impressed. That is very nice. You can get a guide for you know, maybe what's going on. So I think maybe we'll go and look for some potassium carbonate that I've got next door and see if we see something on there. And then it comes with, like I say, a nice box. And uh, it has a USB uh, to USB-C. It's not USB 3, but anyway. And I guess that allows you to pull the data off uh, to a computer maybe. And um, we shall see. But anyway, I'm at first glance quite impressed uh, it seems to be fairly nicely sealed and uh, robust. This is a real, real tool for uh, experimenters. And I think um, delivered it was about $230. Um, I think the cost alone uh, on its own is about $200 US dollars. So it's actually, I think, cheaper than this pancake uh, based detector. And it's giving you a spectrum as well. So how cool is that? So yeah, we're going to get um, we'll do an ultra experiment here, and we'll do like a expose it to the device um, uh, for a period of time without anything in there, and then we'll do an experiment where we're running this for say I don't know ten minutes with a piece of foil in there and some water, and we'll see if we get any spectra of radioisotopes being synthesised. Anyway, that's interesting. So I'm going to go and have a look for some potassium carbonate now, and we'll just see what we can see on the display. Actually, interestingly, um, it has three levels of zooms. So you can zoom right into the lower energy levels down here, and then you can click and zoom a little bit further out, and much further out. It's a very nice little device. Be interesting to see what this looks like on a smart device. So right on the unit, you have uh, you can go into settings. So and you can choose display units, measurement units, dose rate, dose, screen, uh, signals, uh, how to turn the Bluetooth on, language you want, uh, the time, device info, factory settings, and back. So if I go back, that's how you get the settings go there. That's, I'm very very impressed. It's really well designed really well designed so um, so you just hold that to go to settings and so what does this one do okay that gives you your kind of that direct output reading in sieverts per hour very very impressed so I keep finding other modes this is the kind of real-time view mode um, and uh, that is the sum mode, and this is the counts per second mode, this is the spectrum mode, which you can see here, and that's the tools, and if you go all the way around to the back here, it has the off, and it has this nice little binky binky bonk sound when you turn it off, which is quite cool. Now you can see here that not only has it got software for mobile devices, Android devices, it also has software for Windows. Uh, that's uh, very cool. So there you go, device purpose, portable dosimeter, radio code 101 is designed for estimation of an ambient background radiation and a level of radiation from various substances and objects. Any suspicious objects and surfaces, building materials, antiques, vehicles, soft soil samples, etc. It estimates the radio radiation situation by the power of ionizing radiation responding to x-rays, gamma radiation, 
and a flow of beta particles. It is also able to visualize the energy spectrum of the absorbed photon radiation. So I have some potassium carbonate here and hydrous, and uh, I don't see any immediate changes here, um, but we will need to do some, I guess, long-term sampling. Uh, we should see some peak over here for the potassium beta, but of course it probably won't come through that glass, so um, <clears throat> it's not really a gamma source or an x-ray source, so um, anyway, that is a quick look at the uh, radio code here, and uh, maybe I will try and capture a frame from the PC software. Okay, so the potassium uh, carbonate here uh, was not good enough for our uh, detector here because it's just a weak signal uh, from the very low count rate beta coming out of that and uh, so I have this uh, thorium here this is the welding rod that was exposed to Amasa gas back in 2019 and it's currently under there and in the uh, thorium decay chain there are some uh, beta isotopes and on the screen here you can see an accumulation and uh, this is the spectrum and over here you can see the real-time sort of uh, micro sieverts per hour and then the counts per second over here and uh, you can see there is some sort of thing going on around about here or maybe over here uh, now um, on the settings for the spectrum, you have a pulse count and count rate. You can set your calibration here with some calibration sources. Um, you have a linear or logarithmic. I've currently got it on logarithmic. And you can have channel number or the energy. So that's what you're seeing down the bottom here, up to 3 mega electron volts, roughly. Um, now, the channel... Uh, here if we turn this on uh, we can see that this is only 256 channels now that is not a lot of resolution um, but if you were potentially expecting a particular isotope uh, and you knew its emission then uh, you could have a pretty good idea um, when the uh, shape of the detected spectrum goes up you could maybe detect that particular isotope quite clearly um, but when we're looking at the spectrum techniques that we have in uh, California uh, that Alan Goldwater has at Magic Sound Lab that has uh, I think uh, 2048 bins uh, certainly uh, the base level comes with 1024 bins which is four times the resolution 2048 is four times uh, the resolution and uh, if you had 4096 uh, that would be a lot more resolution, wouldn't it? So uh, 256 is not massive, but uh, it is only $200, uh, which is a fantastic price, and it's handheld, and apparently it runs for something like 500 hours off the embedded lithium polymer battery. Now, you can see here, uh, both on the real-time here, this is uh, 38 microsieverts per hour, and you can see it here, uh, to an extra decimal place. If we move this source away from it, uh, we can see that that drops down. So I'll take that away, and you'll see that it very quickly drops down. Uh, both uh, here, it's going down 32, 31, but you can see this is already dropped down here um, to a much lower level. Okay. So you can see how fast uh, the response of this is. And I think the background here, when I was doing it earlier, was around about 21, 22. So um, you can see that that thorium is almost uh, approaching, doubling the background. So you can see how fast that occurs. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, reset this. Uh, so you can go here and go restart accumulation, restart spectrum accumulation, and I'm going to send this to a uh, linear scale. So I'll restart it again. 
we start it again, yes. Okay, so you can see it's about 22 there. Uh, and you can see it building up. And uh, we are going to again put this over here. So for those that are wanting a an ability to see approximate energies and even be able to calibrate this particular device um, uh, when they're doing experiments this is it's orders of magnitude cheaper than other spectrometers and it's handheld um, so you can easily put it in areas and into uh, experiment designs which uh, other devices would uh, preclude so you can see it's going straight back up to the sort of almost 40s level here and you can see the accumulation here so this is 256 bins but if we switch this uh, setting here to the um, energy level you can see that uh, there's something down here uh, 528 and something here on 304 now I haven't looked to see where this is but on the um, software for Android apparently uh, it has an inbuilt database that gives you an idea of what the peaks are and uh, if you want to be sure about that you would want to calibrate it but anyway yeah so this is n nearly double uh, from this thorium welding rod so there you have it I think it's a really really rather nice tool just to show you it works again I'll move that away and uh, we should see this dropping down account rate dropping down and the micro sieverts per hour and with the Android as I said earlier um, it uses the GPS and it can plot on uh, a Google map the radiation in different locations so there we go I'm gonna test some mushrooms later so thank you very much for your time